Welcome back everyone, it's FNHUSA57 here. We are back on Neverwinter on the Xbox One. At the end of Mod 9, getting ready to go into Mod 10, and I will be going over everything that you need to know about the new, or should we say, new for most players, returning for some, Challenge of the Gods event. So we've had this event like once before, uh, but it was when the game first came out and they've changed a ton of stuff on it. So this is a pretty interesting thing. You only need to be level 10 or higher to participate in it. And it's going to be something that you can make some good diamonds off of. So I'm going to show you literally everything you need to know about it and a few of the best spots to farm. Keeping in mind what you're going to do is just basically get this as you're killing enemies. From the item that you'll get, you can get the Celestial Mantle, Invocation Gift, Die Packs, Divine Injury Kits, and it enchantments and potions appropriate to your level the divine injury kits are awesome because basically you use one and for a set amount of time you're immune to injuries so if you don't have vip7 they can save you a lot of gold especially doing dragon runs and things like that there's also a new item it's the blessed gift of the gods and you can get one per day basically uh, as a free quest if you come to the main event emissary, you could say, in Protector's Enclave, you can pick up a Blessing of the Gods. And this will reward you with XP, Silver, and a Blessed Gift of the Gods. Now this is the really cool thing because it has the same rewards as a regular Gift of the Gods, but it also will reward you with something from some of the other events and some pretty nice items, actually. Um, the Joaquin's Coin Purse, which is, meh, marginal. Uh, Priestess Assumed, Acolyte of Kelamore, Timor's Lucky Coin. That's a pretty good item right there. The Forge Hammer of Gond at green. That's also very nice. Isle of Thander, Greater Lathander's Belt, Greater Lathander's Cloak, Ogma's Token of Free Movement. Um, the Paladin Ghost, which is a companion, and it has a chance at Alira's Bell. Also, uncommon or rare vicious enchantments. Not the best thing, but it's something that you want to do every day because it's very easy to do. Now, let's look at what you have to do because this event is a little bit more complicated than just killing things. So, for this, it won't really matter whether you have a high DPS character or not. I'm going to show you the different zones that are going to be ideal for farming it, assuming you are at least a level 60 character 70 would be ideal under that there's no real ideal zone for you uh except for around like uh, the carthraxis dragon in the never death graveyard so what you're going to want to look for is several places any of the elemental zones that would be drowned shore reclamation rock spinward rise and fiery pit uh, those are going to be really easy to do. The easiest one, of course, would be the Drowned Shore, because this works the same way, plus or minus up to seven levels of your character level, and being in a zone that lowers your character level, even if you're 70, you're lowered to that max level, so you can actually run through and get this. Now, you can get these challenges as you do just normal quests or dailies or things like that, you don't have to specifically farm for them, but it is nice that you can specifically farm for them. All right, so basically this is going to be off of kills. Now, there's one other place I should mention that you can go, and that is the guild stronghold. However, you're going to get an additional task if you go to the guild stronghold. If you go to the guild stronghold, you have a chance of getting a task that requires you to donate to the guild coffer. It's easy and difficult at the same time. Now here we have one of the most difficult ones for me, the first one I got. And this challenge is to survive 30 seconds in combat while below 50% health. Time limit, 3 minutes. This is... A little bit difficult to do because of my lifesteal. Uh, purely because of my lifesteal and the fact that these enemies really don't hit very hard, you can basically stand in combat and, uh, you know, not really get, you know, murked. 
So a good idea is to find a heroic encounter if you are high leveled like I am. If you are not high leveled like I am, then uh, it'll be a little bit more challenging for you because of the possibility that you might die. So what you want to do is make sure that you do not have a companion summoned, something that's going to kill the enemies for you. And unfortunately, this guy's actually doing the heroic encounter. So basically what you want to do is you want to look for a large group of enemies. And if you're over leveled like me, I'm going to unequip or try to unequip here because I had that stupid invocation blessing. But I'm going to actually unequip one of the pieces of my gear. And that's going to be my armor so that uh, I can drop down in health quicker. Because, unfortunately, each one of these challenges has a time limit that you must uh, complete it in. So, like right now, I have to survive another 21 seconds. Uh, you could use health potions, so keep that in mind. Uh, you can also thin out the number of enemies or survive off of lifesteal. Just make sure that you are under the 50% health. Another three seconds and we'll get that reward. Okay, there you go. You see that gift of the gods just dropped on the ground. Merc those enemies and very quickly go ahead and uh, put back on my armor. So now we can pick up the actual gift of the gods. And it'll take approximately 30 to 40 seconds or so before I will be able to get another gift of the gods challenge. So during that amount of time, you're just going to want to run around and kill whatever you can. Um, it doesn't really matter where you are. So while I'm looking for another task, let's talk a bit about how they changed this event from the first time that it came into the game. And that's when it first was released in game, all you had to do was literally walk over the item, this task, and you would pick it up. So here we have another task. I just got it. Kill 10 enemies, no encounter powers. All right, so that basically means that you can use your at wills and you can use your daily, nothing else. If you're a high level character or higher level than the zone that you're in, that makes it very easy to do. That's why I love this drowned shore area because I can use artifacts, I can use everything like that super easy just got that so that's the second one that I've gotten also you kind of want to find a less populated instance so uh, there are a lot of people farming this event you're gonna want to possibly go down to the change instance option and like you'll see there's 14 people in my instance it would be a good idea to switch instances so you're not competing against each other now, there are some of these that can be a little bit difficult. Kill a certain number of enemies while at half health. Um, complete a heroic encounter within uh, the time limit on that one's like 10 minutes. But most of them are pretty easy. They're like kill so many enemies while using encounter powers. Use your daily uh, three times, I think, in like five minutes. Most of them are very, very easy to do. So it's not a huge deal on getting them like it's as long as you're paying attention it's one of those events that you can't just kind of mindlessly throw on some music and wander around but uh, as long as you're paying attention to which task you get it's easy enough to be completed also at the same time you can earn refinement and gold depending on you know what enchantments you currently are using pretty simple to do it's going to take me a little bit just to get another one of those challenges to drop because they have that cooldown. like i said should be getting one pretty soon there we go there's another one and i think that's a mr green i believe yep that's a mr green so shout out to him so we got another challenge, kill five enemies, no at-will powers. Now this one is probably the easiest one to do, because it, it is no at-wills. 
So this allows you to use dailies and it allows you to use encounter powers. There we go. That one's done. Should be at three of five. And I'll be out of Mr. Green's area soon enough. Or possibly farming with him. We'll see when I uh, do the live stream a little bit later. I'll also show you some of the rewards that you can get too. So if you are doing this, it's a good idea to go ahead and make sure that you have your Dragon Horde enchantments, uh, Mount Bonus Wanderer's Fortune, Fey Blessing enchantments, anything that has a drop chance off of kills. Make sure that you have that equipped so you can make the most of your time. And then if you have multiple characters, once you've finished the quest for the blessed pack on one character, go ahead and switch to another character and do it on that character so you can get the most out of the event possible. And one of the reasons why I love this event is the fact that you really don't have to uh, do too much for it. Like it, It's not a risk of missing it when one of those tasks drop you know it because it's right in your face this big blue pillar and it was a lot of fun the very first time the event came out because the item that you could get out of there allowed you to reset the cooldown on your invocation timer basically making it so that you could do more than one set of invocations in a single day now i don't think that works anymore because they have changed the way invocation works now but uh, i could be wrong i don't have one of those items on me at this time so i can't confirm that it works and the drop chance is about the same for all the enemies so you just kind of gotta kill your way through until you get it kill five enemies while you're below 50 percent health this is the annoying one this challenge of kelamore this is my personal bane of my existence, because mainly because of my lifesteal. So let me get rid of that. And before you pick up that challenge, go ahead and make sure you're ready for it. So in this case, it's going to be unequipping my armor again, and then picking it up and looking for a large group of hostiles, ideally a large enough group that they're going to be able to take me down to 50% health and then I'll just nuke them real quick because there's no uh, time limit as far as like you have to do it in a certain amount of time um, like the actual kills part you do have to get taken down to 50% health before you can even start and the whole challenge only has three minutes so again you're gonna want to remove your companion um, or at least I prefer to remove my companion, but somehow this guy got summoned back out and is just going to be a, a pain in the ass. He must have just come off of training. Uh, so we might possibly fail this because my lifesteal is so high and the fact that he's out. I can't also unsummon a companion in combat, so just kind of wait. As soon as you drop under that 50% health, nuke him, but... Uh, because of lifesteal, this is why it's the bane of my existence. My lifesteal is so high that uh, you pretty much heal up really quick. So this may actually be one that we fail, and we have got to get rid of that stupid companion. Um, companions are just a nightmare for this challenge of Kelamore. And I'm going to try and bring as many of these enemies in on me again. Remember, lifesteal is your enemy at this point. Because uh, even if you drop below 50% health, if you heal over 50% health before you actually get the kill on the enemy, it will not count. So it's a good idea to kind of beat them down uh, or let them beat you down to almost the point that you're going to die. Like, not so much that you actually die, but almost the point that you're going to die. This way, if you do get a small life steal, it's not major and going to ruin it for you. So there we go. We barely got that one, though. That was, that was a pretty close call on that uh, because of the companion. And I'm actually going to keep my armor piece off right now. Now, this is also a little bit 
<laughs> of an annoying one. This is the uh, three skill nodes one. So basically you have to interact with three skill nodes and search them. Uh, and you actually have to gather materials from those skill nodes. You only have 10 minutes to do it. So this is one of the ones that you can pick up and you can try and do. Or you can, well, try and get something else. Um, now if you know the area really well, you're going to be able to get skill nodes easier, you could say. But uh, it just depends on the area that you're in. So I do know a couple of skill nodes. I don't have skill kits all on me. Uh, so ideally you want to go with ones that are for your skill in particular. And there's a couple that are back in the beginning of this map. There's no real, there's no real perfect area. And these fuckers just will aggro on you and leash for an incredible long distance, which makes them annoying. It used to be when this was first out that you had uh, tasks that were so, so easy. They were literally like um, something like use 10 health potions within a minute or kill so many enemies without using any health potions. Like they were super, super easy to do. And most of them are now, but they added a couple of ones that are doozies and it basically will lower your chances of getting a new task if you leave a task sitting on the ground. So if the task even has a chance that you can complete it, you want to do your best to actually go and complete it. So you'll see I have one of three skill nodes. And for me, the best option right now is to claim that skill node and then to actually go and change instance. To hopefully to an instance with a lower number of people in it. I know this is taking a little bit longer, but this is what you're going to run into going for these. Now, the other option you have is to totally skip that. And uh, if you want to eliminate a current challenge without actually picking it up, the option that would be best is to change instance. So either way, it takes a little bit longer to farm than some of the other events. As you can see, the skill node is not there right now. Uh, that's marginally depressing uh, because basically you have to run around and there's a skill node over here, uh, but I don't have a nature kit. So um, I'm actually going to buy that off of the Tarmaloon Trade House, which that has actually increased the cost of your skill kits now. So anybody who's buying them that's why they're up and they're more expensive right now but you'll see i can get like 10 of them for 650 diamonds so you can buy them from regular vendors or you can buy them off of the trade house like there's multiple ways that you can actually buy skill kits and probably the majority of you have skill kits on you I just don't make it a habit to uh, carry around skill kits for everything. It's kind of a personal preference thing. If you uh, if you want to carry around skill kits, go for it. It's probably a good idea for you to buy like a stack of 10 skill kits for every skill and just do that. Uh, I just don't have the inventory space. Uh, so real quick, we're going to look for another skill node. And usually if you come to a, a supply vendor, you know, you can get the skill kits right there. So just to show you, you can get your skill kits easily. You don't have to buy them off of the trade house. And then you can do the same thing basically every minute and a half and change instance to check skill kits, which is probably or skill kit locations. Uh, here's one for dungeoneering actually uh, so let me buy a quick dungeoneering kit and sometimes it likes to lag when you're typing stuff in so the dungeoneering kits can be really really expensive um, I think they've already started to go up a crap ton and 
that's just because there's not a whole lot of people selling it. Um, I'm willing to pay that pay that price though right now just to to be done with it. So I'll take the three for nine k. Normally I wouldn't do that under any other circumstance, but uh, I actually need just to get this done. So somebody made a, a few extra diamonds off of me. And of course you stand a chance of breaking the kit. There we go. Done. All right, finally. Now I just got to collect that gift of the gods. It's gonna send you back to talk to the emissary or the speaker of AO. So back to protectors we go. Now while this is loading, I should say the reason why I go to the elemental zones for this and not to the guild stronghold, where skill kits are a little more common, you could say, but the reason why I don't go there is because of the extra task for donating to the coffer. And there, why I don't like that, even though it's easy, you could simply donate one gold um, or a thousand astral diamonds or something. You could donate you know, a piece of green gear. It's very easy to complete. It takes almost as long to do it, depending on how far out in the stronghold you are and how fast of a mount you have. So that's why I don't, uh, I don't like to go in, and do that. So you can turn that in. As you can see, I can get that quest in 5 hours and 40 minutes. Now let's show you some of the rewards. So they do bind to character as far as the Blessed Gift of the Gods pack. Now there was some talk about the Blessed Gift of the Gods pack or Gift of the Gods pack or something like that being able to be bought in the Zen market. Right now, I have not been able to find them in the Zen market, so I cannot confirm or deny on that. Let's go ahead and look at the 11 of the regular Gift of the Gods that I got. So right now, I'm getting rank 6 enchantments, superior potions, a divine injury kit. Uh, there's the Celestial Die Pack, which they'll go up in price later. The rank 6s are awesome due to the double refinement. So just being able to pull rank 6 enchantments is, is crazy like that. And then the Divine Injury Kits. Literally, you use it and it'll remove all minor and severe injuries. Plus, you gain immunity for 10 minutes. It's incredibly useful. If you're not VIP 7. And they do sell for a lot after. So, right now, we made potions. And we made lots of refinement from rank 6 enchantments. Plus, the die pack. This is an incredible event to farm. So, drum roll for the really good pack let's see maybe we'll get lucky and get a forge hammer or gond here goes nothing all right not too bad i got timora's lucky coin a dark enchantment rank six a radiant enchantment rank six and two of the coins of joaquin the coins of joaquin are basically useless so i'll take the enchantments and i'll take that timora's lucky coin which right now is probably going pretty cheap yeah, it's going to be about 27k on the market, uh, but after the event ends, that'll actually go up in price. So that was a pretty good find there. I would have had the, or would have rather had the Forge Hammer gone, but we can't have everything. So now you see why I recommend that you do that task on every one of your characters that can do it every single day, and this way you get the most that you possibly can. So, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, comments, anything like that, make sure that you leave a comment. Otherwise, go ahead and smash the like button. Remember to share the video and subscribe for more content. I will catch you all next time. Have fun farming.